Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you all. Sorry for the uh, couple minutes late here, but we are live officially. Jenna and I are back. Yay! The, uh, the band's back together. We haven't done a, like a tasting together in... It feels like a like very long time. Right? Yeah, this is, it's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, so welcome back everyone. Hope, hope everyone's doing well. Um, we got quite a lineup for you today. Of course, this is our May outturn preview tasting tomorrow, uh, May, what is it now? It's the third. Oh, tomorrow, May the 4th, which is uh, Star Wars day, day for my fellow nerds. Uh, but tomorrow, May the 4th at one o'clock Eastern is the release of our May outturn. Uh, you know, sadly, none of, nothing here is Star Wars themed, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely whiskey themed. And I think we got a pretty good selection <laughs> of casts that are really just epic for the uh, for the for the spring, I don't know what, what's Jenna. What's what's on your what's what have you been enjoying lately? Um, you know, like ex bourbon, just ex bourbon, wow. everything. Um, I'm a massive fan of just like ex hoghead, you know, matured whiskey, and I just love. I've just been really into those ex bourbon, those ex bourbon casts. So they've been a lot of fun, and it's yeah. usually not a profile I stick with, but um, they've been kind of on my radar. What about you? Well, you know, I, I've, uh, it's funny because I mean, I, I've become such a seasonal, I guess I've always been sort of a seasonal uh, appreciator. And I, I do, I'm kind of in this lighter style kick, but you know, today, tonight we have a lineup sort of that spans all different styles, different cast types. Some that I, I have not, I've not had in a long time, I, I would say, which is pretty exciting. Um, you're getting some love in the chat. Christine Daisy says, yes to X Bourbon. X Bourbon cask is a, uh, yeah, I, it's it's. I think it's something I've come to appreciate more over time. Just, Big time. Yeah. What, what is it you enjoy most about it? Um, just that you know, you just think ex bourbon, and you think, oh, I'm gonna get those like just juicy oak, vanilla kind of caramel flavors. But there's such a wide diversity of flavors that you can get out of an ex bourbon barrel or just bourbon barrel in general. And um, that's been a lot of fun to really kind of dig those out. Um, each whiskey in itself is unique, um, but each whiskey in its own bourbon cask is even more unique. So it's been a lot of fun to kind of dig out the non-typical flavors in those whiskeys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I think, um, well, well, I won't give anything away, you guys. So again, tomorrow is the release of the outturn at one o'clock Eastern. We'll be tasting, tonight we have five whiskeys. We'll be revealing everything at the end, uh, the whole list that's coming up tomorrow. And I'm seeing some comments already that some are saying, uh, John Bourne, hello, game. The month of May is reason enough to be an SMWSA me member. John, it is going to be an exciting month. This outturn is one of the largest we've actually seen in quite some time. Again, we have, we're have tasting five tonight, but you'll see the list. It, it's pretty expansive. Um, and just I want to just kind of quick welcome to everybody else. Brian Baumstein's in the chat. Of course, Tom R was first. Tom R, good to see you again. Hi, everyone, says Tom. Jimmy T is back. Hey, all. Michael Gonzalez, good evening, Michael. George Kaplan, good to see you, George. Happy May outturn preview, everyone. Sounds like a holiday. I mean, happy I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is the most exciting time of the month. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do it too. We do too. We have our mid month mid month outturn, of course, which is the third, usually, usually the third Tuesday of the month, but the first right. Tuesday of the month is a, a holiday to behold. So, um, anyway. Welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's kind of random sort of placement. We're still sort of on the end. It feels like the end of this this pandemic. I'm of course stuck in this little uh, bedroom with moving boxes. I'm in the process of moving. And so uh, for, <laughs> forgive me, it's, it's sort of out of place. I don't have all my fancy society bottles to, to <laughs> prove to you that I know what I'm talking about. I'm just here <laughs> in a better room. Okay, uh, I have a few. Like, I'll pretend I know what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah, Jenna is the authority tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, so anyways, again, I'll turn to release tomorrow. Let's just kind of get into it. We're going to try to do this in an yeah, hour. I know we can please. go on and on. And sometimes, Jenna, we can really go on and on. I've uh, watched, I've watched some replays of us and we like really nerd out. So guys, we'll do some nerd out tonight. I can promise that. But uh, let's get to it because we have sort of a special, yes. <laughs> special, a special something, I guess, uh, part of this. Thank you. Um, so anyway. So well, Steve Anderson says, looking forward to hearing about the new offerings. Well, let's get to it. Let's get to the it. first one. Um, so the first one tonight, and Jenna, you have the bottles. I, I, I have some little samples, so thank you for that. But uh, mm -hmm. first one is called Cask 9.186, a trip to the exotic mm -hmm. markets uh, in the juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. Oh. And 
you know, as shown by the, that blue uh, color strip, and of course the numbers that. Well, actually, it's funny because there are three different blues and three different flavor profiles, but the the deep one that's not yes. the, the one that kind of matches my shirt. It was not planned, but anyway. I'm just feeling juicy oak and vanilla tonight. So here we go. So 16 year old from a first fill bourbon barrel. So there you go. You know, on our bottles, guys, you know, it doesn't say bourbon barrel, but typically if it says just first fill bur barrel or refill barrel, by default, it is an American oak X bourbon barrel. So yeah. it was used to age bourbon. And that's just what you were talking about. Yeah, this does say first fill X bourbon barrel. Oh, it does say it there. Okay. Okay. Well, it then. Does then say yeah, I think sometimes we see it. We see it, we've seen it both ways, but just I think usually when, when the default would be American oak, and then if it specifies otherwise. But it sounds like, all right, we got yeah, it going. Very excited. So I'm getting into it. It's been a day. <laughs> yeah. So 16 year old from Speyside, Juicy Oak and Vanilla. I, I'm just a, I'm big into it. So let's uh let's get started. I've poured a little, little half ounce here. Ooh. So you, why don't like you? Yeah, you, you go ahead, Jenna. You were just talking about this is kind of your style right now in the moment. Yeah, so this smells like like pastry cream, like like inside of like a, a an eclair or like a like a cream puff or something like that. It smells very creamy on the nose. But there is like a nice like there's like a wood polish almost kind of note I'm getting on that. And it just it smells really good together. It's a, it's a really nice, nice aroma. What are you getting? Well, I, th I think it's just so interesting when you can sort of just know as a, a spirit and and pick up on the texture, like you said, like it, it yeah. is creamy. And, and of course, from, from experience, uh, from other, other casts from the sister we, we've seen have been pretty thick and viscous. And I think, you know, so that's kind of my bias expectation. They're not all like that, of course, and we try to not to no. judge before tasting, but just nosing it. You pick on that, but it, to me, it's just such a, it's a classic, classic space side. Yeah. Uh, 16 years of age and it just, you can just tell the complexity. Oh, I thought that really was of it. Yeah. I always thought that was such a weird thing when I first got into whiskey, like being able to smell texture. Um, Cause I, I don't really, I'm not able to do that in other things like in food or other things. It's really just whiskey that I feel like you can really smell like what the texture will be like. And I think that's a really, it's a really cool thing. Yeah. Come, come and below guys. I, I'm curious. Is that something you've experienced when nosing <laughs> whiskey? Because I, it's, I certainly have, I thought I was crazy. Clearly I'm not. I have Jenna you know, here. But she, we're all crazy. You know, yeah. Has anybody else, can you, have, you, have you been able, that's a, for, question of the, of the evening right now is have you been able to sort of just detect texture just on smelling uh if you haven't of course don't be alarmed like it's it's i don't i'm convinced that it's not a really common thing but nonetheless <laughs> all right well i'm giving this a taste all right cheers everyone thanks for joining us That's so good. That's so good. Wow. That one's so good. You know, well, what, you you're on the bourbon kick, or the the ex bourbon cask kick. You can you kick us off. It is. It is. When you smell it, you have this expectation in your head that this is going to be this like incredibly viscous, like dense whiskey, and it is that a thousand percent. I mean, wow. I mean, it is like, this is heavy. Yeah, the uh, the, the viscosity is just like, it's Holy so funny. God. We were just, just talking about a moment ago about just smelling the texture. And it's like, it, it is a really oily spirit, really buttery. Buttery. Sort of vanilla cream. Uh, it seems so, like that's such a cliche or, or basic uh note for a whiskey that's been matured in <laughs> personal bourbon barrel but it's just so lovely like it really is such a lovely thing it, it but i think that that's the beauty of it is that you know you can have a lot of whiskeys who maybe have some of those notes that are, are classic or cliche um but they don't hit them all like in harmony this is like a perfect classic just representation of an incredible space side in an ex bourbon barrel i mean this checks every single box yeah, and it's, wow. it's, I'm realizing that it doesn't show here, but the ABV 
everybody watching is 53.2 percent yes i thought that was just you know spot on <laughs> I, I usually i guess if i'm really enjoying it like a whole a big dram like i'll go a bit lower you know i mean i'll, I'll start strong then water add some water that was pretty money for me yeah um, i wouldn't touch this with any water but yeah. that's just me personally um I think this this ABV is like you said it is spot on. It is right where it needs to be. Um, I mean, this just delivers on every level. Well, I'm gonna do it. I just uh -oh. I'm, gonna take one more, I'm gonna take one more step. Well, no, I mean just I'm gonna clue you guys in. So when we when we pick our casks, you know, when we score when our when our tasting panel and Edinburgh gets together every week and samples the different samples from our warehouse that were pulled to decide what's ready to be bottled. Uh, the scoring process includes judging neat, judging with diluted and everything. So I'm, I'm just going to do it to uphold the <laughs> the tradition and the rigorous testing process. But I thought neat was really just for enjoyment. Like that was spot on. This is this is like one of those whiskeys that is reliable. It's like you know, at the end of the day, you want you want like this perfect classic space side whiskey, and this is it. I mean, this is like, it's, it's part, it's, I, I know I'm maybe not supposed to say that P word, but it's pretty spot on. Well, I, I think reliability is a great, I mean, what you said, like that's spot on, like reliability. It is something that you can probably all year long enjoy yep. yourself, enjoy with friends who might not be as experienced with whiskey as you and still want to blow them away with something like it's easy to appreciate. Um, and I and I think I, I, there's value in that in that to me, big time. I get, getting some comments. Fifty three percent is not high for the SMWS. No, it, I guess it's 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 not by our standards. <laughs> We've been opening some crazy uh, strengths lately, but um, Zach Andrews <laughs> says he just, he just opened sixteen point four six at sixty four point nine percent. I think we, we're getting there with some, but this I just think it's so good at at, at this strength. Right but I've, I've also found that too. It's like you know. I've, I think, enjoyed those lower ABVs. And by lower, I mean in that like 47 to like 54 kind of range. Um, I have found that I'm like kind of going back and appreciating those, you know, a lot more than some of the ones that are at a higher ABV. Um, and so that's, that's been a nice kind of, you know, treat. I, I kind of find you're on like cycles, right? And whiskey, it's like you kind of like you said, it's like seasonal or like mood based, but um, it's been kind of nice to go back to those lower ABVs. Um, it's been a treat. Yeah, I mean, I saw a question earlier about really how does the how does the name match up to the profile? You know, it's funny. I use a trip to the exotic market. I guess I've been to some exotic markets, but I, I love like that descriptor for whiskey. Yeah. There's, there's some casts that, that are you know, whiskeys that are sort of evoke like a, like a, some sort of, well, it's exotic, but a tea. There's like, in this one, there's like a little bit of black tea. There's some, I think, hard to decipher spices, you know, just sort of a layer of, of mystery, I think, beneath yeah. that. Everything in front for me was like the classic vanilla orchard fruit drizzled in honey, but there's just more. And I think that's, you know, what's out there. I've not been to Morocco, but I think like that, I just, I'm, there's some spicy spices in there that suggest that's what I would want it to be. You know, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think I, I haven't read like the full tasting notes, um, you know, kind of from the, the panel, but um, the short tasting notes, just you want to read those that are on the bottom? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. So it says notes of vanilla, panna cotta, followed by lime cream caramel, diluted nuances of chocolate dipped caramel fudge fingers. Did you get some fudge fingers when you? Put you know, the water? well, I did it at first. The power suggestion always sort of changes your experience. Sure. I'm gonna go back, but I mean, definitely a little bit of ginger, but I'm not. I didn't get. I didn't get much. Seth Wharton said that it's like a soft blanket, comfortable and familiar. And it's a, mm. it's a great. It's a great way to describe it. I think it's spot on. I mean, we'll move on, guys. We have we have quite a few here to taste, um, but I would just sort of sum it up. If you're in the space side style, I saw a comment, um, Sarah Johnson says, I've never met a whiskey I didn't like, but have loved everything from space side. This to me is, is classic space side, but I think that sort of exotic 
layer of spice and I, I just picked up with sort of like a dried ginger yeah, i think just think that adds a little bit more you know so. yeah i just think that is i don't think i've had a whiskey like that in a long time yeah so um that's beautiful i like your word reliable because that was to me you know yeah like something you could always reach for and just probably have a good experience with every time i know look you can say that with anything but Let's be honest, there are some styles that there's a time and place for. And, you know, it might, you might pour something really smoky and you're like, you know what, maybe I didn't really want that. I'm out of the mood. This is something you probably, you know what you're going for, you can be satisfied every time. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, for sure. So, yes, yeah, so that's the first one, everyone. Oh, you know, if anyone who picks that up, you know, drop us a comment, I think, in this video after it goes up for replay. Love to hear what you think about it. But let's, uh, yeah, trip to the exotic market. Let's move uh -huh. on. So the next one, so things are to get kind of uh, interesting here. So next one Where's is that? the next one is called 13.82 Life Simple Pleasures. By the way, I love that name. That's where I love that name, uh, which is a Northern Highland whiskey from a uh, first fill Cosica wine barrique, which as I understand is this type of Spanish wine, uh, something we don't see too often. And it's in the sweet, fruity, and mellow. You know, typically we see if, you know, with like the, if it's the red label, the deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profiles, we call it. It's the one you, you'll know, not, not always, but the wine cask or, or if it's a sherry, tends to really be very powerful or very prevalent in the, in the spirit. But it's because it's a sweet, fruity, and mellow, uh, that does sort of suggest that maybe the wine is sort of just more in parallel with the spirit. It's, it's more balanced. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know what I was expecting on the nose. Yeah. But I don't know if I was expecting that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is a that is like a fermented grape bomb. I was just talking about how the wine is it might not be that strong, but man, you cannot get past it. No. <laughs> I always get I always like compare this aroma to like gummies, like fruit roll-ups and like all of those horrible things that I would eat as a kid um, and secretly eat sometimes as an adult. But I always get that like aroma of those like, it's not like fake fruit, but it's like just really dense concentrated fruit flavors or like dried fruits, cherries, and just a lot of red fruit in this. Like really, it's really nice. I definitely get a lot of, you said cherries, like chocolate covered cherries, like really yeah. dark chocolate, also creamy. A lot of ginger, like really fresh ginger. Um, Tom, the ABV on this one is 58.9%. Yeah, 58.9%. And this this is in fact, let's see here, just to break down, although it's not, it's not, I think, broken out on the little banner here, but this is actually a double matured cask. It spent five years in an expert in Hogshead and then was transferred to, for the final two years, into first fill uh, wine barrique. So, and, and it's funny, so it is a Spanish wine uh, cask, but the wood itself is French oak. So, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it produced there. It's an international whiskey. Really, really, really interesting, you know. So drying too. Like it's like, what do you what do you think? Like I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. Oh. As it was still sitting in my mouth, I could feel it drying out my palate. Wow. You know, it's interesting. We do we've done some of these uh, tastings here on, on our channel during the day, like in the afternoon and the or the morning <laughs> your time. And now we're doing one in the evening, and I'm just finding this these ABPs. I'm like, oh, this is nothing. I'm totally on board with yeah. this. Thing. This is 58.9 percent. I just just uh, for reference, uh, and I'm like, wow, this is perfect. Neat, you know. It's been a long day, and this tastes so good. Yeah. The, the the the. It's funny. We talked about the word. Use the word exotic to describe the last one, but like that's exactly what I would describe this one. You know what yeah. I mean? This is if exotic means sort of. I mean, I guess it depends on the definition, but. It is something very foreign in a lot of ways and really with a lot of mystique. We have Definitely. Like, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, no, I'm just, Steph was asking, do you find this really oaky? I definitely pick up a lot of tannins, like from the French oak. Like it's yeah. definitely there. 
you know, and there's some spice that I would probably you know, attribute to the that to the French oak to the wood itself. Um, but I put it's there, but it's not overly oaked, you know, because there are definitely some whiskeys where it's like, wow, that is a liquid wood. It's absolutely not that. What else? I mean, it's it's kind of. I mean, to me, this is like a classic dessert dram, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, the mash and drum says almost sounds like a high age cognac, drying very fruit forward. It makes sense, of course. The, the spirit is you know, obviously derivative of grain, but that the that Spanish wine. It, it, it's funny. The, 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 there is sort of like a the cognac element. I mean, it's just sort of the inverse. You know, you obviously have you have spirit that's still from grain, but of course, in the wine influence, sort of doesn't mask that, but it's like in perfect duality. Yeah. And I guess yeah, if you were, if I if you were tasting this <laughs> blind and someone said, "Is this a cognac?" and it was like the third one of the night, well, or, or maybe the tenth one, I'd be like, "Oh, that's a hundred percent cognac." Yeah, that would be really interesting to kind of plug this into a tasting and see what people say. Because this would yeah. fool you, for sure. Yeah, we, we would just reveal how gullible we really are. I mean, we would yeah. just, of all, we'd just <laughs> let everybody down. No, I think this, I mean, look, it's, as we're saying that, it's like, it's it's so, it's definitely a whiskey too. You know what I mean? As much as much as it sort of resembles in a cognac, um, there is a nice maltiness to it that is that is very familiar. Yeah, this is, the nose and palate didn't match for me on this. Um, so it was like a surprise on the nose because I wasn't sure what to expect. And then another surprise again on the palate just because it was so different than what I expected it to be. Um, but that's the great thing about these single casks is you can think all you want and then they will prove you either right or very wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, this is bizarre. And we, we haven't really even considered that this is like a Northern Highland spirit. Yeah. And the distillery that, uh, Tends to produce something pretty pretty unique all around, but uh, because it has such like a warming characteristic to it, you know, that doesn't. It's very different from the sort of the cold and and slightly coastal cast that we see from the distillery typically. Evan says this one really interests me. And this is this is like interesting is the word to describe. You can use it in a lot of ways. Sometimes I use the word interesting to describe something I don't necessarily like. But in its true sense of the word. Yeah, interesting. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Like I'm being polite. Uh, but in the positive light, this is interesting because I'm genuinely yeah. interested to get to know it more and more, you know? Yeah. So we have a reliable whiskey. We have an interesting whiskey. We'll see what the next three bring. The nose with water changes like pretty drastically. How so? Uh, it's like softer. The That yeah. like cherry that big bold like chocolate covered cherry like queen anne cherry note is kind of dis just disappears um it's i want to say it's more like malt forward with a little bit of water like it really tames down those big fruit notes and you're getting more of that like grainy malty warmth coming through um with a little bit of water yeah i, I agree with I, I did add some water i was kind of just doing it without really thinking and and uh, it kind of exposes the age a little bit. This is a young spirit and nothing's wrong with that, but I'm just at full strength. It was sort of this really robust, explosive yeah. experience that, I, you know, age is irrelevant at this point. There was this unique cask influence uh, as you add a bit of water and sort of just kind of, ex it's exposed a little bit more. You kind of, yeah. the spirit and the, the vibrancy of it. Um, so anyway. And then there was a question about um, the number of bottles we'll have of this. And I believe we will have 90. 90 bottles minus this one, I guess. So 80, 89. Yeah, 89. Regrettably, we do have to open one from time to time. <laughs> I just looked it up. So yeah, we will have about 89 bottles to send out. So yeah, that was cool. So again, yeah, cast 18.82. Life's simple pleasures. And, and I'm curious to hear from the chat too. What's the most interesting, <laughs> using that word however you like, what's the most interesting whiskey you've had in 2021? We'll start there. This is up there for me. And I mean, an interesting in a good way. Like I'm generally interested to learn more. Uh, and, and that's kind of the whole fun of it for me. But yeah. 
So let's let's. I'm curious to know. Michael Gonzalez says the bottle will go fast. You know, you know, possibly it's definitely interesting, and we have some others here that I think are, are equally exciting. So uh, we'll refill in just a moment's time. But so maybe you know, I would just suggest you know for everybody for tomorrow when these whiskeys are released at one o'clock Eastern time, just to log into your accounts. If you're not yet a member, it's a great time to sign up. Maybe this evening, uh, so you can ha have access by one o'clock Eastern tomorrow. But uh. But yeah, let's uh, let's. You want to move on to number three? Yes, I do. Okay, let me uh, do this. So the third one is going to be cask one hundred seven point two one bounty on the galleon, a spicy and sweet flavor profile, which is just purple. <laughs> I was going to say eight years old first fill sherry butt, and I know everyone likes a good sherry butt from Space Side. And here we go. There it is. I was very, very, very excited to see this on the list. I really wanted to give this a go. So very excited to taste this. Yeah. So just, you know, just some for some clarification too, the, the last one we just had was a double matured whiskey, spent five years in American Oak and then transferred to a, uh, a wine cask for two years. This is full term in sherry here for the full eight years. And ABV, though not shown here in the, in the, the yeah, ticker, 60, is 63.3. Yeah, 63. So for the comments earlier saying that that 53% whiskey we started off with was just too weak for society standards. Come on. Here we go. 63.3. Glad we didn't start with this one. Ooh. Big time. That too is like very classic. That's a classic nose for this kind of whiskey, no? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to judge so quickly, but I think right away, everything suggested this is a sherry bomb. You know, yeah. this is a, it's sort of a wild, aggressive aroma for sure. Yeah. Spicy and sweet after eight years. Interesting, says Michael Birdie. Yeah, and, and again, I think, Michael, to your point, Typically, you might see this closely classified as a deep, rich, and dried fruits. Eight years, definite sherry note, but but I suppose softer. I mean, the spirit is really well balanced with with the cask, but it's a dark whiskey. Yeah, it's a, you know what I mean. An aroma in the glass. It's sort of like a dark amber. It looks like to me. If anyone knows the movie Jurassic Park, <laughs> when you have that mosquito in the tree sap that was used to basically create the dinosaurs and then wreck havoc and kill the people. This is the exact same color as that tree set. Oh, well, hang on to your butts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, oh, wow, wow, couldn't make that one up. <laughs> so really, uh, question from Matthew J. Ryan, is European or American sherry wood? You know, we don't know on this particular one I think it could be. I mean, true bodega casks from Spain are typically American oak, like 95%. But there are a lot of Spanish oak uh, seasoned with sherry for Scotch whiskey, ma whiskey maturation. But but it's definitely got a very heavy spice. And Taste it. How is it neat? Oh my gosh. My eyes are watering. Wow! If, <laughs> if you're 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 having a moment. This is the nose was like softer, like what you said. It was like a little more tame, yeah. soft. I mean, still classic, but the palate is explosive. Yeah. Wow. Um, first of all, yes, Seth, that was a Samuel L. Jackson reference on her part. Um, but. <laughs> There is a distillery that this is not from that if, if I tasted this neat, I would be 90% sure it was um, of that distillery. We won't talk about the distillery, about Birdmen jumping off a cliffs or anything, but it is like a classic space side sherry bomb um, at a young, at young, young, intense age. Wow. Wow. I'm getting like this. I keep going back to the nose because there's like a almost like a like a balsamic kind of like glaze to the nose of this. Like I want to eat this with a steak <laughs> or drink this with a steak. Um, yeah. 
like this is like one of those like hearty meal of a whiskey whiskeys. Yeah, it's it's for me it's like a very autumnal uh whiskey. Like you know, with these yeah. sherry bombs, you think a lot of time like Christmas, Christmas cake, winter, pine trees. I'm just trying to describe very poorly the typical sort of environment uh, and, time, and time for enjoying the sort of sherry bomb whiskey. This is more sort of like a fall. Again, it can be enjoyed all year long. So don't, and you're in LA and I'm in the Midwest, so it's different, but and it's, it's so hot. Low. It's so hot, yeah. It's so hot. <laughs> but it's still delicious, even on a hot day. Zach Andrew says the Storm Toss C, which is a cast that was released recently, had some of that balsamic on the nose. I like that too. Yeah. You you, you call that out, but are you, are you a fan of it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love those kind of notes in whiskey. Yeah, the nose on this, it really like I feel like from when I first put it in my glass to now, it's really just blossoming in the glass. Really good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add water just because uh, I'm kind of forgetting the 63.3 percent is the strength of this one. Yeah. I'm gonna read the notes while you're doing that. Yeah. So this says on deck we were served orange glaze spiced duck for lunch. Some loved it, others were overwhelmed by the spice. Regardless, a voyage to remember. Yeah, I would eat this with some duck or drink. I keep saying eat. I'm going to eat my whiskey. Matthew J. Ryan says he likes to eat his whiskey too. So um, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, but yeah, this would be really great with that kind of meal. Oh, man. Oh, orange glazed duck would be, yeah. I'm just thinking, oh, it would be so amazing. It sounds so good. Yeah, so if you're in the, if you're in the Sherry Bombs, you know, this is obviously a, a, an easy, easy pickup, you know, yeah. and I'm going to take off my hat of, obviously, I think hopefully, you know, by now you guys, we haven't really been pushing <laughs> these whiskeys onto you to, to buy. We're just here to taste them, which is pretty great. Uh, can't really argue with the price, like the value of, of for experience yeah. is pretty, pretty spot on. Yeah, I would just say just, again, if you're, if you've not had a whiskey of sort of this style of a, sort of a younger uh, first fill sherry, but in sort of a lighter influence, again, because this is not really deep red or anything. It is, it is sort of, as I described it, more autumnal than really overpowered sort of winter you know, yeah. fruit bomb, uh, which I like. It just tastes very pure, you know, in that sense and balanced. Um, so if you're looking for something that's super dark and your glass is, you know, the liquid is almost black, that's not this, you know. But if you yeah. want just a really well balanced eight years old and at 63.3%, there's so much to offer there. Yeah, this is also a good like intro into the category kind of whiskey because you really get all of those incredible, beautiful things that you love about sherry, you know, cask matured whiskeys, but not at, like you said, it's not super aggressive. Um, it's really balanced. So I think that's question. A pick up. Um, I'm sorry, wait, say, I'm sorry, but I just cut you off. I was no, you're like, fine. Yeah. Well balanced and yeah, I just think it's a good pickup for somebody who, you know, even if you're trying to get into the, the sherry category, this is one of those you know, kind of great whiskeys for that, just because you're getting all of those incredible flavors, but not like super aggressive uh, on palate. Question from Brent Gibson. How would you compare to Inferno Toffee Pudding? So, actually, wait a second. Okay. So, <laughs> Inferno <laughs> Toffee Pudding, I actually have a bottle right here, random. I packed away most of my whiskey for this move, but uh, this is deep, rich, and dried fruits full like the sherry profile is darker more prevalent uh than what we have here which is in my opinion a bit lighter you, you yeah. know what i mean the construct more more ginger and um There's like a maple. Maple. Yeah. Oh, maple that's a really yeah yeah you know what i mean i'm just trying to sort of, sort of trying to paint this picture here uh, as opposed to like the classic sherry of just sort of clove and cinnamon and really just sort of overripe and dark fruits. Yeah. I feel like Inferno Toffee Pudding was like that thick, sticky kind of sherry. Yeah. Bomb, where this is more of like a delicate, like, that's, it, this is more, a more fun kind of 
cherry bomb, whereas that's like a mature, like you sit back in a big chair and it's like really just gooey and sticky on the palate. This is like more lively on the palate. Dale says, I just had an infirmant toffee pudding a half hour ago. <laughs> it was what I was about to say. I mean, listen, enjoy whiskey any time of the year, right? You'd like, for me, that's like a winter whiskey. Again, I would have it not in the winter as well, but uh, this is sort of, I think th there's more versatility probably in, in this one as a, as a comparative. Yeah. So anyway, uh, shall we move on? So we got two more. Are you, are you ready to move on? I, I mean, I, I'm kind of yeah. like thinking, I just don't want to move on. I want to finish all these. I know. And I'm going to take one more sip of that one, actually. All right, let me do a palate rinse. Because I'm and very sorry, ready. And, and sorry, Tom, I just saw the comment about, just to go back to the adding water to show its age, like the last one. Uh, not not the same way. No, I thought the sort of the, the sort of continued on um, from neat to diluted. It was just less intense, so it was kind of it was, it was pretty consistent. So anyway, let me uh, sort of I got a little into that one. Let me uh, hide that one. So next one. Yeah, you ready? Is what do we have? Okay, that's right. I see the green. Ah, wait, show. Okay, so. <laughs> What are, what are we out here? I'm, I'm just pouring it right now. Cask 66.186. 66.186, what is the name? I can't, I can't read it. Pronounce that for me. Oh, if, if there's any people who are French in, a, in the comment, you can pronounce this and I'm not going to even attempt. And I think we'll hear, hear about that tomorrow, but nonetheless, <laughs> this is uh, Bouvou breakfast, perhaps close enough. That was my honest That's pretty good. Um, It sounds right from the American perspective. I'm going to Google it's it. Scotch with the French name. But nonetheless, here we have uh, a peated Highland whiskey. And we've talked a lot about peated whiskeys from the mainland of Scotland. Yeah. Just being that they're very different from that, that you probably know when you get into Scotch whiskey, which is typically peated whiskey from the islands or specifically the island of Isla. Uh, Peter whiskey from the mainland is generally a bit more peppery and sort of uh, just generally approachable, less sort of coastal medicinal uh, and astringent than a lot of the sort of the Isla or other coastal whiskeys. So I, it is funny. I, I sort of wrote off years ago, like the peated mainland whiskey. So, so the Highland region is what you consider a mainland, even though it spans coast to coast. Uh, but I'm big on that for like the last couple of years. Like I just, anyway, and I saw your reaction already as i'm just rambling what do you think yes um it is there is a like a it smells like smoked meat like so uh this thing that this breakfast that it is is um like a, a camp like a temporary camp it says without tents or cover um which was used by soldiers or mountaineers sometimes called a bivy so there's your history lesson for the day. But as far as the whiskey goes. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, so this is like, this almost kind of reminds me of some of the 16s that we had. Like there's a really robust, like smoked meatiness to this whiskey. Yeah, 100% bacon. Like there's no, like there's no fancy meats here. It's yes, just bacon, it's bacon. You know I mean? right? You know what I mean? There's like, I'm not going to pull out the this Italian charcuterie plate. This is just American bacon, smoke bacon. Yeah, absolutely thick cut. That fat is just dripping into this glass, and a little bit like roasted peanut too. But oh. yeah, there is a, a peanutty note for sure. But not like peanut butter, like actual, like you said, roasted peanuts. That's a. Peanuts, yeah. I mean, look, I know most people don't like bacon, so this whiskey will probably sit around in our shop for a long time. That's totally cool. If you like bacon, which I know that many of you don't in America, uh, then this is for you. But otherwise, I would like to wait for all the members to have a chance between before ordering a lot of them because man this is like there's such again such such versatility and like when this can be i haven't even tasted it yet i'm gonna just stop talking you do the thing i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm enamored 
So I'm going to glaze some bacon with this the next time I make bacon. Then I'm going to take the cask that we had before, 107.21, and I'm gonna pour that on some pancakes. We have a full-fledged meal here. Okay, this is like beyond like <laughs> where I'm at. I have, wow, I'm not even there. I'm not, I've just tasted it. Oh, that's really good. It's really, really good. I look at like a mesquite barbecue smoke. Like it's, yeah. it's. Like briskety and. Oh yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just like, you know that smell that's like in your hair after you've been in front of the grill or like at a barbecue or it like sticks to your clothes, it gets in your hair. That smell is this taste. Yeah, we don't get good barbecue in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> we don't get it here in California either. But I'm leaving this place in two weeks time. So I will be in barbecue city. And I gotta tell you, this is, very different. There was a comment here about uh, the Solar 66. Is this new direction? Direction, though. Though these peated Highland whiskeys from the Solar 66 have been kind of all over the place. Not not good or bad, but just mm -hmm. so d diverse in flavor. Mm -hmm. This is the most savory. Mm -hmm. I keep saying American uh, mm -hmm. barbecue whiskey I've had from Scotland. I think you know what I mean. Or I mean, there there has been some, but. This is up there. Yeah, this is just meaty and earthy. And like I said, there are some of those 16s that kind of get those notes for me. And this is very close to that. So if you've been into those like 16s that we've released, this is right up your alley. Yeah. This is, this is good. ABV is 58.1%. You know, we haven't talked about that. Nine which yep. I think is pretty spot on, neat as is. I just really want to get outdoors with the whiskey. Um, this, I just feel like in an, a campfire situation, it's, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm just selling this whiskey myself on YouTube right now. This is, this is like, <laughs> such a, such a, it's such a, like a no brainer. It's a, if you like, if you like peated whiskey and you want to sort of stray away from the coast and try something that's not as salty and maritime and just, just focus on like a, just a, yeah, again, that, that sort of barbecue flavor. It's like, this is just, yeah. it's so funny. This is from Scotland. Like, it's just amazing. It's such like a classic American, uh, you know what I mean? Like character. And it's funny reading the notes on here. I would almost expect to see these notes on like some of the Isla whiskeys that we've released. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, it says, among moss and ferns, a hot iron pan sizzled with bacon, bacon, and pork belly and merged with peanut butter, licorice, and oily mechanics overalls. Yeah. Uh, I saw a comment here from Seth Warden who says, I'm not even a pea person. This sounds great. I mean, I think, yeah, it's very different from, you know, you have to sort of reimagine smoke and peat as you know it, yeah. because it's not... Uh, it's not the typical peated scotch, which again is, is sort of very coastal and maritime and astringent and medicinal. Uh, this is more familiar to, the, to my American palate as a barbecue smoke, you know, and if you don't like barbecue smoke and you definitely won't like this one, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is like of the earth. Yeah. 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 Uh, Zach Andrews says he had a pull out 66.162, a true harp, 66.162, excuse me. A true harmony of flavors just to hear us talk about this one <laughs> appreciate that Zach. yeah this is a uh, like we said they, were, they all sort of vary you know in, in flavor and, and aroma and this one is a uh, this yeah. is yeah i want to go on a trip because of this whiskey yeah i, I, I don't want to be here i don't want to be here either. i don't either in this hot room i want to be out like in the mud four-wheeling and then coming home to you know eat like a big plate of pulled pork and brisket and ribs and mac and yeah. cheese and all that good stuff. Yeah. Question is it not briny? No, not for me. It's not briny. You know, this is again, the peats cut from the mainland, which means that it doesn't contain any sort of the substances you'd find off the yeah. sort of Atlantic ocean, like that seaweed or shellfish that when burn creates sort of that, 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 that very uh, distinctive flavor. 
this is uh, not that it's, it's, it feels like it's just the forest floor was cut up and then burnt and you have everything burnt acorns and all, but it's uh, yeah. it's wild. Um, and all the peanuts that the squirrels drop. There in there too. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't want to be here. I'm in this little guest bedroom, as I mentioned earlier, just kind of packing. We're getting ready for a move in a couple of weeks. And I'm just ready to get outside. Yeah. Um, so thank you, uh, Tamar. Chicago will miss you. I, I won't be too far. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm moving to, I'll just say, to Nashville, Tennessee uh, in a couple of weeks. And so, yeah, I'll be back here often. Of course, my family's still here as well. So, uh, yeah, except for the barbecue, this this was just, yeah. Just, yep. Just kind of say, not like, I don't know. I try to, it's not like otherworldly. You know, yeah. like something we've had, like, wow, I, I don't even know what that is. We were both we're like, I know exactly what that is. It is delivering exactly what I want. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm this it. is, if you are a fan of Pete on any level, this is definitely a good pickup. <laughs> ben does not like it. Oh, As you can see. <laughs> Really, really good. Is it an O Man whiskey? I mean, again, for a different reason. Like, I, I just think it's almost a bit of an emotional one. I mean, not getting too deep into it, but I just feel like, okay, here we are. It's such an outdoor barbecue whiskey, which I haven't been to an outdoor barbecue in I don't know how long. I mean, we've been all stuck inside for most of it, you know, just getting out and just like a return to normalcy is what this whiskey tastes like, you know? So I think there's. Maybe for me, the experience is, is more meaningful. Yeah. Um, so Seth Warren, should we buy before Ben gets all them? Listen, my, I will not get all of them, but uh, all members will have first crack at it, however many bottles they get. If there are some left over in a week's time, I will not be disappointed whatsoever. Um, this is just, it's just money. It's just absolutely money. So, Jenna, did you say that Ben is an old man? I, I missed that. No, Ben and I are the same age, so I would never say he was old. Your birthday is what month again? Which month? Huh? Your birthday is which month? Our birthdays are like four days yeah. or five days apart. Yeah, what, what, what's the date or the month? March 11th. March, March what? 11th? 11th, yeah. I'm March 2nd. Yeah, so we are nine days, nine days apart in age. Nine days apart. So uh, that doesn't mean that you didn't call me an old man. I'm just saying that we are <laughs> nine days in age apart. All right, old lady. So, so All old right, man. old man. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. So um, let's pull this one off, guys. We have one yep. more tonight, and let's see here. So yeah, go for it, go for it. So this is kind of oh, we should probably oh, this is a special one. We gotta we gotta refill it. So you want me to explain what it is? Or yeah, you of wanna... course I do. You go for it. Oh. oh my gosh, look at this color. Oh, look at that. Oh, fell for the <laughs> color show. Uh oh. Okay, so. <laughs> we're, probably, we're always like, do not judge by that color. Look at this color. Oh my God. So, <laughs> not judge by that color because nature is wildly unpredictable. And that's kind of the truth. Sometimes color tells you nothing about a whiskey, but yet nonetheless, when you pour something, you're like, oh my God, look at the color. I do the look, same. Thing. I'm not saying it's going to be amazing or it's going to be this or it's going to be that. All I'm saying is that it's got a beautiful color. It's colorful. It's That's it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Old man. Je this I'm wearing color. I usually am very monochromatic, and so I, I'm I'm looking forward to adapting some more color in my life. So here I'm gonna pour this one, and so guys, big news. You probably saw if you subscribe to our email mailing list, uh, the San Francisco World Spirits Competition just announced uh, all of its winners in various categories. Uh, San Francisco World Spirits Competition is one of, if not the biggest spirits competition in the world. Thousands and thousands of spirits enter to be judged and scored blindly. Um, we won a number of double gold and gold medals this year, which we sort of outlined in our email of today. Uh, one of them, though, was voted the best independent merchant single malt, independent merchant or independent bottler, basically a non-distilling whiskey company. Uh, of all of them, the single whiskey that won the top score as the best is this one, which is... 46.104 torn turn me inside out. <laughs> very, very just yeah, all right. Turn me inside out. 
uh, also Sweet Fruity Mellow from Speyside, uh, 13 years old from a first fill sought turn barrique. So interesting. Oh, okay. So really excited. So now of all the winners that we that we listed in our email today, uh, most of them are, are scheduled to be released to members here in the US in the coming months. This one is actually being released tomorrow, of course, in the May out turn. And so it's interesting that we just conveniently have this one. I mean, we, we had planned to taste this in the lineup tonight before we knew it won the award. We just got the word a couple of days ago. And uh, just for clarity too, so this is actually, so it's also double matured. It was 11 years old, excuse me, 11 years matured in a bourbon, American Oak X bourbon hogshead was the cast before we then transferred it to a first fill uh, Sauterne brewing. Sauterne is a cell of French dessert wine really sort of sweet, but unlike uh, like a sherry or port, which are two different sort of very dark red fruit dessert wines, Sauterne is uh, basically like a, of a white grape and is in character too. So very softer stone fruits, uh, very sort of like I think confectionery sugar type of wine, in my opinion, uh, which I'm just absolutely <laughs> crazy for myself of Sauterne and also Sauterne Mature Whiskey. So yes. One year, essentially, right? Or no, excuse me, two years, approximately, in the Sauterne after American Oak. So we'll see how that, obviously, the San Francisco World Spirits Competition felt that that was a good move. And so uh, we'll just leave it to the two people on YouTube to reinforce that. It is. It's going to have texture. It has texture yeah, on the broadcast note. Broadcast right now. We're done here. I'm just going to... Click goodbye because there's nothing more to say. Wow. Yeah. It's such a, yeah. I'm going to take a this moment. Pretty to look at. I mean, it's just that, it's like so golden. I mean, it is really a golden dram. I love things that come from our whiskey set things that come from a uh, Sauterne cask. My my society whiskey that I love and adore, you know, is from Sauterne. Yeah, I think what's interesting is- Point something from many, many years ago. And that yeah. was a full, that was like a full term in Sauterne. Cause like sometimes I think it was full term or second fill Sauterne. Cause if it's first fill Sauterne, you know, it's really fresh. Yeah. Uh, some it can like it's it's very tricky to work with because sometimes I feel like it can become so so heavy so quickly and really overpower the spirit. So obviously you and Campbell, who's our spirits manager, the decision to to pull this and present it for the tasting panel at this age suggests to me that things are probably more balanced, and that's just what I get on the nose. It's much more balanced. Yeah, but you there is like a fresh brightness to this. Like I want to be in France on a sunny day in a field, the wind blowing. Yeah. With this whiskey. This is the the moment when I realized that Jenna has the bottle and I have a uh, soul sample. Um, <laughs> and I start to question my own decisions. Uh, but but no. But. It's okay. I will I will uh tuck it away for a rainy day. <sighs> I know. I mean, it's like a field of barley and sunshine and magic and love and tears and it's everything in a glass. Oh. Well, your well, your balsamic note is there. There's like a goat cheese. There's like oh. an age. There's an age goat cheese, or maybe more like a goat. Not as funky as goat, but like a Gouda cheese for sure. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like an aged cheese. Really, really prevalent. A little bit like almost like a hop, almost like some hops. Wow. Toffee. Gingerbread for sure. Uh, and the sauterne, the sauterne, like the noble rot. Like this is the grapes. It's, it's all there. Oh. Yeah. What That's you sure. Yeah. It is like thick and syrupy. I definitely can like see that honey goat cheese note. 
question from Sung Kim is I'm curious, how does SMWSA decide which bottles to submit to be judged by the good people at SFWSC? Um, you know, it's 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 really a I was just sorry, I, I was pausing because I was kind of laughing at all the all the acronyms there, SMWSA, <laughs> SFWSC is. Uh, the Scottish Wine Whiskey Society chooses how to present, which samples to present to the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. We typically go for a variety, you know, indicating, I think, or representing what we're doing. We are, as a society, uh, as a company, really just experimenting more and more and more. And instead of just acquiring a cask and dumping it into or bottling it right away and saying, here you go, we're really just pushing the boundaries of exploring new flavors, creating flavors. Again, in our way, of course, we're not distilling, but in, in double maturation and whatnot. And so uh, I think I think personally, Ewan Campbell, friend, great guy, so I'm a little biased, but I just, it's great to see over the years just how his expertise has evolved. And I think it's just, you know, I'm excited that one like this one where he actually had a hand in it. It did not taste like this when it was just aging that bourbon cask. Um, I'm sure it was a good whiskey nonetheless, but it was just, it just a different, different beast altogether. Uh, timed right with the sought turn, I think, uh, maturation. This is like, I'm struggling with words on this one. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's like really musky, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a springtime whiskey, but it, like, again, with some cheese, like the white wine, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not a digestive, like it's, and it's not like a, it's <laughs> you said you're struggling and now i'm like well, i'm not struggling let me do this no, I'm obviously struggling it, it's what it is like the meal you know yeah this reminds me of my like society dream whiskey that this is very close really i'm trying to remember what that cask number was i'm looking it up 135.1 yes 135.1 seductive yeah. sensory sensation or Sen sensual, sen sensual sensory. sensory sensation yeah. yeah this is so close to that on like every level and i think that's why i'm struggling because i loved that whiskey yeah. so much and i've not had one that has even come close and this is right next to it i mean Wow. I think that one, if I remember, guys, and we're talking about like a 2018 cask here. I think that one was, um, yeah. that was 13 years. 16. In a, six, oh, 16 years in a second fill saw a turn cask. Yep. As opposed to this one, which has spent most of its time in, in a bourbon cask and then transferred to really a more active first fill saw turn cask. You know, so net result is similar, you know, as it sounds like. Yeah, and that 135.1 was distilled on the 15th of March, and this was distilled on the 14th of March. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Crazy. What? This is this is so much younger. Really? Yeah. 135. Oh, not the same year, though. This is not the same year. No, not the same oh, year. Oh, okay. I was like, what? What is going on? But they're it's March babies, like us. March babies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is this is just this is a special whiskey. I feel like this is one of those whiskeys that you know you kind of pull out for special occasions, which that's every whiskey, but this is this is really special. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's just so crazy. So we did say the ABV, right? 57.2%. Yeah. I actually haven't added water. I'm going to add water real quick and then we can we're going to reveal the rest of the casts that are coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Those part. Um, I'm excited to share that list. There's some surprises in there. <laughs> John Bourne is made the end of the SMW's fiscal year. You guys are about to realize some serious shortages. All right, like, well, thanks, John. But no, it's not our we are on the count. Our fiscal year is aligned with the calendar year. Nonetheless, listen, our business is for you to like the whiskey and, and man. Yeah, this one is like versus. Oh, we, had such a good lineup. we had such a good lineup. Like this, like sets a mood. It's like emotional. This is emotional whiskey for me. 
I wonder like, what you guys think. But we're, we're just like nerding out about this. We obviously we represent the Scottish Football Society. This is technically our 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 product, and here we are just like geeking out over it. And I, I'm kind of forgetting at times because Jen and I both kind of came from this as sort of blogger background, where we just sort of are continuing what we're doing and what we've done. But if we just so sort of happen to actually actually get a paycheck at the company, so <laughs> I got to remind myself. We're just like this is a hell of a lineup. It is. I'm so glad that like our reunion tour has begun with these five whiskeys. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, looking back, and, and you know, we'll post the replay, and you guys can go back if, if you're if you're tuning in late and, and missed the first few. Uh, there were some in here. Well, there was one, the last one that I was freaking out. I wasn't freaking out, but um, that was just the, the 66.186, the peated Highland, the, the barbecue goodness was just like crazy. This is probably a standout for you. I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm picking a favorite. I'm just, yeah. No, with, without question, this is so similar to this profile that I've been like on a hunt for, for now almost three years and I haven't found it and it is in this bottle. So this is, this is like emotional whiskey for me it's, it's incredible yeah it's, it's so good i think anyway well let's let's pull up the rest of the list and we'll, we'll show you what's going on again again and tomorrow at one o'clock eastern time these five whiskeys are being released in addition to some some others um let's go ahead it's, and look at the list. yeah good to go let's show it um because man this is uh you know, if I can actually like share it for some reason and <laughs> say, so you cannot share because um, because this whiskey is too good. So let me, so here's just a breakdown of what, 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 what moves us aside. Okay, this is a classic document called a PDF. And so here's a breakdown. If you guys can see, I, I, I hope um, some of these, of course we have tasted and 84.35, which is going to be our bottle of the month. So if you're in part of the bottle of the month club, you will be receiving this bottle. If you're not in the bottle of the month club, just what it is real quickly is every month we handpick a bottle from the outturn. Um, and you basically, and we, and we send it out automatically and you're just charged automatically for it. Obviously you have to be a member to be a member of the bottle of the month club, but this is the pick for this month of May. And then you can kind of see, look, you guys take a look at it right now. We, we have a one dot, a 1.236. It shines. Um, I'm also realizing, actually, there's no ages. There's no age. All right. Well, let's. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's. Uh, how about this? It's nice to see a 29 on there. Yeah. Forgive me, guys. I'm gonna go kind of rogue here. For some reason, that that didn't transfer over. But I do have, nonetheless, a uh, an Excel file that's just open, and we're just gonna go totally on natural. And I'm gonna share this. <laughs> Excel file. <laughs> no, this, is, this is great. This is great. Okay, there we go. Can you see this? Yeah, there you we're go. Going, we're going real, guys. We keep it real at the society. We put all of our money into our whiskey and our member experiences and our, our documentation, maybe not as much. But nonetheless, here we have a full breakdown. Apologies for that. So 1.32. 236, I was talking about that's the first fill bourbon barrel. Um, we had the 107.21. What, 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 what do you guys think? What, what looks interesting to you? Um, I'm seeing some comments here. The 29, 29.277. Holy smoke. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, that's, that's, that's a doozy. Yeah. I would love to taste that. Full term and a refill Oloroso butt, too. Ooh. Those are just so hard to get. Yeah, the distillery is, is no longer, um, they're trading with independent bottlers of any sort, including us. Um, so it's just such a rare treat to, to get something like that. But what else kind of piques your interest in from this list? What are you what, what are you interested in trying? Uh, that 94.1 is kind of, you know, waving its hands at me. That one looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I should probably, you know, it's I would I would imagine that 94.1 is probably actually, you know what? Because Excel, because this is an Excel thing, 
uh, it's 94.10. <laughs> yeah, so we got to just cast 94.1. I know, I it's apologize. like, wait, that's not the first one, but okay. Apologize for the sort of a uh, low production spreadsheet share right here, but from, from our streaming service. Um, but yeah, 94.10, yeah. the gentle beast in the east. I like that too. Yeah, and then the 35. Huge fan of 35. The dark lore, 35.272, yeah. first filled barrel. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, come on, what, what sounds good to you? A one and a two, says Connor. Yep, a one and, and two, which is the two, is the 2.12. Um, Spinnies and hedge grows. Okay. Sue's with me on the 94. 94.10, which is listed as 1.1. <laughs> yeah. It's a rare cast, says Dale. Yeah. Yeah, I'm big on that. So, and then we got, and we have a single grain, G5.14, yep. which I'm getting more That's and more bigger. into. Um, so anyway, so this is the list all coming out tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern time. And um, yeah, pretty excited. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this, but I'm also looking at myself because I'm getting really, I had these five and I'm like, I wish there were actually more to go to. to, go, to go yeah, these, these were really, this was quite the lineup. I should have probably saw the chat. Uh, so that's that. Anyone, if any, any questions, you know, uh, a comment I, I see here from Connor, the very diverse list. Yes. I'm kind of going back, but Sue says, I haven't had an 84 before. So this is a great chance to, to try it out. Um, 29.277 is a winner, says Provin. And let's see. Um, just a lot of posts. Connor says, yes, so many different cast profiles, ages. Y'all have a lot this month. It really is a big month. Big month. And typically, look, we think about whiskey, we think about the colder weather, but I just think this is such a great time to get outside, enjoy whiskey. And one of the, that, that fourth one we had, that 66.26 yeah. was just spot on, like you yeah. go camping, you know? Um, so anyway, so that's that. Any sort of closing remarks, Jenna? Um, I'm looking forward to speaking, hopefully, with many of you tomorrow. If you have any questions about any of these, please don't hesitate to give us a call, and I'll be happy to answer, you know, whatever I can. And I guess, you know, hold on to your butts and be ready at 1 o'clock. <laughs> right. So if you are a member, make sure to log in to your account at smwsa.com for 1 o'clock Eastern for the drop then. If you're not a member, go ahead, check out the same website, of course. Uh, learn more about membership, you know, and everything, and you still have time to join in ahead of this out term. So uh, if any of these whiskey sound good to you and you want to learn more, go for it. Other than that, I just want to say thank you, obviously, Jennifer, for making this happen. Um, thank this you. This was a whole lineup. This is, this is really everyone stood yeah. out for such a different reason. And I kind of like, I'm going to go back and, and revisit. I think I'm going to finish every glass tonight. That's my goal. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a nothing goes to waste here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for making this a lot of fun. And yeah. we're gonna be doing a lot more of these coming up soon this month. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. Well, next time. Yeah. <laughs> cheers. <laughs>